Hi, my name is Udo Slender. Welcome to my YouTube channel about adventures in astrophysics. NASA has published the first deep image from the James Webb Space Telescope. In this video I will compare this image with one taken by the Hubble Space Telescope of the same field. The image shows a quite unknown galaxy cluster in not seen clarity and richness. The telescope's breathtaking launch was on Christmas 2021. Unforgettable. In the following six months, all following operations were successful, even better than expected. The telescope has cooled down to 40 Kelvin and the optics and instruments were calibrated. Before I will make the promised comparison, I explain the cluster's name, kind of objects we see, and the goals for imaging this field. NASA provided the misleading name SMAC 0723 for the galaxy cluster. You will not find anything about it in the large astronomical databases NED or SIMBAD, the correct designation is SMAX J0723.3-7327 which sounds even more cryptic. But wait, if it is explained, it gets clearer. MAX is the abbreviation for Massive Cluster Survey. The numbers that follow are the object's coordinates in the sky. The leading S stands for Southern indicating the hemisphere on the sky. The Massive Cluster Survey contains a sample of more than 100 galaxy clusters, measured by the ROSAT telescope to be bright in high-energy X-ray light. The goals of the MAX survey are to categorize and better understand distant massive galaxy clusters. Among the 100 found, the six brightest were further investigated. The goal in this Frontier Fields campaign with HST and the Infrared Spitzer Space Telescope was to see deeper into the universe than ever before. The Frontier Fields combines the power of HST and Spitzer with the natural gravitational telescopes of massive high-magnification clusters of galaxies to produce the deepest observations of clusters and their lensed galaxies obtained so far. Gravitational lensing enables Hubble to see fainter and more distant galaxies than would otherwise be possible. It is the essential warp factor that motivates the Frontier Fields project, one of the largest Hubble observation programs ever. The frontier in the name of the project reflects that these images will push to the very limits of how deeply Hubble can see out into space. Galaxies behind the clusters experience typical magnification factors of a few, with small regions magnified by factors of 10 to 100. As the cluster SMAC 0723 lies too far in the south to be observed with the Keck telescopes from Hawaii, it was not selected to be among the handful of frontier fields. So no Spitzer infrared data are used for this cluster. Hubble's filter with the longest wavelength in the near-infrared is the 1.4 microns filter. It allows it to reach galaxies at redshift 11, the absolute record up to now. Why infrared? For very high redshifts of 6 and higher, characteristic for the farthest objects from us, visible light is generally shifted into the near and mid-infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. For that reason, to see the first stars and galaxies, we need a powerful near and mid-infrared telescope, which is exactly what Webb is. Now let's compare the images. This deep field, taken by Webb's near-infrared camera is a composite made from images at different wavelengths, totaling 12.5 hours, achieving depths at infrared wavelengths beyond the Hubble Space Telescope's deepest fields, which took weeks. The image shows the galaxy cluster SMAX 0723 as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago. 
The combined mass of this galaxy cluster acts as a gravitational lens, magnifying much more distant galaxies behind it. Webb's NIRCAM has brought those distant galaxies into sharp focus, they have tiny, faint structures that have never been seen before, including star clusters and diffuse features. Clear examples of mirroring are found in the prominent orange arcs to the left and right of the brightest cluster galaxy. These are lensed galaxies, each individual galaxy is shown twice in one arc web's image has fully revealed their bright cores, which are filled with stars, along with orange star clusters along their edges. Not all galaxies in this field are mirrored, some are stretched. Others appear scattered by interactions with other galaxies, leaving trails of stars behind them. One galaxy speckled with star clusters appears near the bottom end of the bright central star's vertical diffraction spike, just to the right of a long orange arc. The long, thin ladybug-like galaxy is flecked with pockets of star formation. Because this galaxy is so magnified and its individual star clusters are so crisp, researchers will be able to study it in exquisite detail, which wasn't previously possible for galaxies this distant. The galaxies in this scene that are farthest away, the tiniest galaxies that are located well behind the cluster, look nothing like the spiral and elliptical galaxies observed in the local universe. They are much clumpier and more irregular. Webb's highly detailed image may help researchers measure the ages and masses of star clusters within these distant galaxies. This might lead to more accurate models of galaxies that existed at cosmic spring when galaxies were sprouting tiny buds of new growth, actively interacting and merging, and had yet to develop into larger spirals. Ultimately, Webb's upcoming observations will help astronomers better understand how galaxies form and grow in the early universe. Now, without further comments, I blink Webb against HST. Enjoy!
subject. This video was brought to you by gigaparsec.de. If you liked it, give us a thumb and subscribe to our channel, Adventures in Astrophysics.